Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today's video is not so much about the battle that you're about to see. I'm just going to be monitoring slash managing the battle in the background. But it's more about my wishes for Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Currently, currently being August 5th, 2021, um, it's... How shall I put this gently? There are some things that I would very much like to see changed. Let me put it that way. And um, like many things, one of the key things that I feel needs to be changed, and this does not go for game labs only, this goes for almost every gaming studio slash publisher, developer, whatever you want to call it, communications. I think most problems are caused by poor communication, and most problems can be solved with better communication. Usually I would rather over communicate with somebody to just get to just get expectations completely clear rather than um, have some sort of breakdown in communications where one party is expecting one thing and another party is expecting another thing. And all of a sudden uh, you're well you're sort of mismatched in communications and nobody knows what's going on. Currently we don't know what is going on with the campaign, with the current state of the game, with the, let's say the plan for what the game developers have, like longer term. We don't know when stuff is supposed to come out. We know that they've been saying, hey, the campaign is going to be out soon-ish. Uh, we are working on the campaign. Yeah, but we've gotten those messages for a pretty long time. And sure enough, they are a small studio. I get it. As a small studio, your main concern probably is not communications, even though you can make an excellent point as to why it should be, why communications should be your main priority. Because better communication, better, let's say, community management or community expectation management can make all the difference. It can make the difference between a community that's going, is this game dead? And a community that's going, ah, okay. Um, they ran into, I don't know, a programming issue. And because of that, it's going to take a little bit more time to get the campaign out. I'm just making stuff up here. They could be saying, well, um, hey guys, because of COVID, uh, we had to work from home and that is going to cause all sorts of delays. We're not getting any kind of communications like that, or at least I haven't seen them. Now, me not having seen them, of course, is a very poor uh, standard for whether something is happening or not. Whether I know of something is not a qualifier of uh, whether it should be known, yes or no. <laughs> Absolutely not. I do read the forums occasionally, but it's not like I dedicate a whole portion of my day slash uh, year to that. I try to keep up to date also by just asking the devs through email every now and then, hey guys, what's going on? We have a decent line of communication there with um, me, for example, reporting the bug on the torpedo boats a while ago. The torpedo boats in, well, not so much this one, but in a uh, different custom battle that I had, for some reason had 12 inch armor belts. Made for interesting torpedo boats, which were nigh unsinkable, but of course it is a bug. So something like that is something I'll develop or I'll email the devs about and say, hey guys, this is probably not as you had envisioned it. But something that I think this game would benefit from a lot. And again, I don't know if they have the budget for a PR person, communication person, community manager, whatever you want to call it, is something along the lines of a community contributor program. And let's Let's vaguely take Ultimate Admiral, or let's take Wargaming as an example. They're a pretty terrible example of how to run your communications department. Um, but they have a program where community contributors interact with the devs. Um, and this is all hearsay. I'm not part of it. I don't know about it that much as uh, the people actually in it would. But just having a clear line of communication between the studio and community contributors such as uh, let's say brother monroe and spartan elite and serious strategy gamer and myself would very much make it easier for them to get news out about what's going on when they're planning to release stuff 
what they're currently working on, and when they expect that new thing to make it into the game. But the lack of communication is making a lot of people uncomfortable. It's making people agitated with the game, because when is this thing going to come out? Why are you still... <laughs> this is something I'm getting every now and then. Why are you still covering this game? Well, because I still think the game is good. Yes, it has a lot of issues. Yes, there are things that need to change. Absolutely. I'm not going to dispute that. Um, I have quite a few issues that I would like to see resolved, which I will get to in a minute. But it's the lack of comms. It's just the lack of comms that's making it difficult. Now, I'm not trying to be arrogant here and say, hey, uh, you guys have to include me in any kind of news media, whatever you want to call it, uh, because I am this big YouTuber, because I'm not this big YouTuber. I'm just the guy who covers their game. But I have, over the years that I've covered this, generated 6 million views. So people are, uh, well, they're coming to my channel to figure out what the game is like, uh, to watch battles, to do scenarios, stuff like that. Um, means that I have a certain, let's say, a certain news value, if you want to call it that, to the developers. But I know it's about as much as you guys do. I know that the campaign is coming. I don't know when it's coming. Um, I know that they're working on it. I don't know what that means. <laughs> because um, as we have seen in previous studios or with previous games as well, not just from these devs, but from basically everyone, um, it's coming soon, trademark. Soon, yes. For some people, soon means tomorrow. For other people, soon means three months from now. For other people, soon might mean a year and a half from now. Soon is such an ambiguous word that nobody knows what to expect. Nobody knows what exactly they're, well, what they're planning to release and when. Um, and soon is just a pretty terrible word. Then again, you have the studios which have roadmaps. And when they do not meet a certain part of that roadmap, they get lynched by the community. Because the community is not happy. They might have been very much looking forward to a specific patch, a specific update. And when that thing does not arrive at the given time, it's like uh, you're waking up at Christmas and your package isn't there. Your gifts aren't there. Of course you get frustrated. Again, part of this could be solved with better communication. Be it in the form of being more active on the forums, having some sort of uh, weekly blog. And sure enough, it doesn't solve everything. Uh, I'm always trying to look at things from both sides. I understand that having somebody write up a blog post every week would take away from their productivity when it comes to sheer game development. But my argument would be that Game development, um, it can be of sort, sorts of aided, if you will, by having better communications with your community. Because if your community management is good and your community knows what to expect, then you have a bit more leeway in your communication. And then again, and I'm yes, I'm going to use the S word, star citizen. Star citizen... Um, I think had roadmaps to come out, I don't know, four years ago? It's still not here. Sure enough, there is a version of the game, but come on, it is definitely not what uh, people were expecting to have after four years of development. It, it might even be more than that, I don't know, I don't keep track of that game very much. But it is all revolving around communications. Right, I think I've hammered the point home enough about communications, or lack thereof, or... Uh, what can be adjusted slash improved. Other things I would like to see improved slash changed about the game. Before the battle starts, give me um, an overview of what ships I have, much like they do. Saying, hey, you got two battleships, you got two heavy cruisers, you got one light, you got five DDs, I don't know, something like that. Then, when I hit next, give me an overview where I can adjust what ships are in what position. Because that would make my life so much easier as a battle commander. Right now, and you just kind of saw me do it. Right now, I need to figure out where my ships are. 
and the first few minutes of the battle is just trying to get them to where I want them to be. I just try and get them to the right coordinates, to the right position in the formation, the right location inside of a, let's say, a movement pattern. Just give me some sort of an overview that makes it easier for me to manage where my ships are. Because in the current state of things, that, I'd say, is one of my biggest frustrations with this game. And I think it can be... Well, I, again, I'm no dev, I'm no programmer, I don't know much about these things. But it is one of the things that I think would make a lot of people already quite a bit happier with this game. Because currently it is just... It's a pain. It's annoying. It's frustrating that you have to constantly be figuring out where your ships are, what they're doing, why they're not doing what you want them to be doing. Uh, the formation system comes to mind. That's something that needs to be changed. And this is Alpha 12. We've had this problem since... When did I start covering the game? Alpha 6? Maybe even sooner than that? It's been here for a long, long time. And one would, I'd say, reasonably expect something like that to already be fixed. To already be resolved. But no, it's not here. Instead, we keep occasionally getting new missions for the uh, Naval Academy. And sure enough, some of these missions are fun. But... I think most of us are not really waiting for new community or for new missions. Instead, what I would very much like to see is um, a sort of map editor or map designer. Because as it stands, you have just a large portion of water, period. Nothing else. Having a system where you could say, okay, uh, we're going to zoom out a little bit. We're going to place an island over there. We're going to create, I don't know, a reef over here or a, a sandbank where larger ships, let's say from a displacement of, I don't know, 15,000 tons plus, where they will run aground. Running aground, of course, would create a whole new game mechanic. And it would mean that probably the AI is going to be in an even worse state because they don't know how to avoid a sandbank. At least, definitely not in the current condition. Um, but it would allow for a whole host of different tactics instead of just trying to shoot the shit out of each other at range. Give me an opportunity to use the terrain to my advantage, as thousands and thousands and thousands of commanders have done over the years in history. The terrain wins you the battle. Not always. But the terrain can definitely have a massive impact on the battle. But currently, it's just this, this I don't know, we're in this huge pool. We're in the ocean. Great. But beyond formations, which are broken, there is not a whole lot that I can easily uh, use slash adjust to get an advantage. Whereas if I know that there is, for example, a sandbank, let's say the sandbank would be about here. And I can push battleships into that sandbank by having them dodge torpedoes. And then they become stationary. Meaning, potentially an even easier target for my DDs, because they can't go anywhere. Then you create a whole new layer of strategy. The strategy being, okay, I'm going to push those battleships towards the sandbank. And then my smaller ships, which normally might not even be able to catch up to a battleship, because sometimes these things are blisteringly quick. Now they can. And um, a map editor, yes, it's probably a lot of work to make one of those things. But it also ties into another point, which is more community input. And by community input, I mean, ideally, Steam Workshop support. And again, I'm going to say it again, I don't know how difficult or how easy it is to implement that into a game. If it takes a bunch more time, so be it at least communicate that you're working on it and that it is going to take more time because of it. Say, hey guys, uh, for 2022, we're hoping to get, I don't know, the Steam integration for June. Hoping. And then in April, you're going, okay, we did everything we possibly could. Um, by the looks of it, we are on track, but we're going to need a little bit more time. So it's going to be, I don't know, August. Just that little update 
could make all the difference between having an angry community and having a happy community. And right now, well, maybe maybe not so much in a, an angry community, but uh, more of a frustrated community. Anyway, you make a map editor, and then you make it uh, an option to export maps to Steam, or, I don't know, uh, using a download system, if you will, go through Nexus, go through... Um, like Wargame has it, where you output a certain string of uh, numbers slash digits, which generates a deck code. It is something like that, which can make it far easier to get more people into your game. Because one, they're able to express their creativity with a new map. And two, you're having more content created for your game, surely through having people do it for you. And these people might have some really good ideas. They might be able to recreate historic battlefields. They might be able to recreate um, areas where very interesting battles were fought. I don't know how much work it would be to make something like that. And the same thing can be said for, for example, the ability to export ships. If you want to have, um, let's say, you want to have an, you, nay, let me, nay, <laughs> sorry, Dutch snuck in. Um, let's say that you have some sort of beautiful version built of Yamato in custom battles. The next time that you open custom battles, that thing is gone. I know that they're working on the ability to save designs, but when that is coming, I don't know. Um, but whether that's going to be able to just be saved locally or then transferred into, for example, Steam or, again, the, the, the random export string, whatever they decide to use, uh, that would allow you to start sharing it. And of course, Steam integration would be better because it is simply subscribe and then you, poof, you got the game or you got the battleship, the battle, the map, whatever, into your game. There are so many things that I can think of would um, potentially make this thing better. If it's a, it is a small studio, Game Labs, I know that they are a small studio. And of course they got hit by uh, our little pandemic last year, as almost everybody did. So I'm willing to cut them some slack on uh, getting delayed with things. Because all of a sudden they might have had to switch to working from home, like almost every other business in the world, um, or at least at the office in the world. Not all, every business can. Apologies for that. But the lack of comms, that's, and I'm going to end the video with that as well, I think is the biggest problem that not only Game Labs is suffering from, but quite a few studios at large. Communicating properly letting people know what is going on managing expectations even if you have to bring bad news it would just make life so much easier for you as a studio so those were some of my points improve communication give me a let's say pre-battle deployment phase to organize ships fix the formation system uh, give me a map editor or designer Allow me to export ships to other people, um, which again would also open up, for example, a um, a championship, design the most beautiful ship, and then give them some sort of community reward. I don't know. You can go every creative way that you can imagine with this. Um, something else, and this is going to be a please do not. Please do not add aircraft carriers or submarines to this game. In the Q&A that I did with them last year, I think it was, if not two years ago, but I'm hoping it was last year. They said that aircraft carriers and submarines are not going to be a part of... Stop shooting, you friendly. Are not going to be a part of this game in the sense that you can control them in battle. I would very much hope that that remains true. Because I think it would completely ruin the way that the game gets played. Now, before you all go make the argument, yes, but aircraft carriers were a deciding factor in World War II. Sure, but this is the 1900s that I'm currently fighting in. I don't want to see a single aircraft flying around here. Um, for World War II, yes, they were a deciding element in naval battles. Sure. But 
as another certain naval game has shown us, they are ridiculously difficult to balance. If not outright impossible. Um, if they are a strategic weapon on the map, sure. I don't mind that. If they are a strategic weapon in the campaign that, for example, allows you to, I don't know, take 10% of the structural uh, integrity away from an enemy battleship before you kill it off, or before you actually engage it in battle, perfect. I can get behind that. But don't give me an aircraft carrier in-game. Especially not with the current system of formations. Because let's say that there were aircraft carriers. I would be very hard pressed with the current formation system to keep my cruisers, let's say my anti-air cruisers in that case, if they would be a thing, to keep them close to my battleships. That would be very difficult. Yes, might be part of the challenge, maybe, but it would be very, very, very difficult. Same for submarines. World of Warships is currently working on submarines, slash by the time that you're watching this, that might have been implemented, I don't know, I don't really keep track anymore. Don't put them in this game. As a strategic weapon on the map, sure. As a strategic map in your campaign where you can, uh, for example, torpedo a battleship on the strategic map and the battleship gets slowed down. Because you knock out one engine, the ship is 10-20% flooded, and instead of 30 knots they can only do 26. If you can make it like that, that'd be great. Because then you can slow the ship down, maybe much like a sandbank, and allow your other ships to catch up allow your potentially slower battleships to intercept that battleship. But in the current way um, that you see the battles happening, submarines, U-boats, whatever you want to call them, have no business being in here. All right, those were some of my points that I would very much like to see changed about the game. By far, the most critical one is communication. Communication, communication, communication. Rather over-communicate than under-communicate. Um, Talk to your community as much as possible. Talk to your community contributors, if you want to call them that. Talk to your content creators. And I'm not just saying that to, to toot my own horn, but we are, well, I am at least part of some of the community contributor or part of the content creators for this game. But we know as much as the other guys do. We know as much as you guys do. And that frustrates me. Because we could be a really good way for the devs to talk to the audience, to you, to the people who play their game or who are considering playing their game. But I feel we're not being employed in that role as much as we could. Anyway, those were some of my frustrations. Um, let me know what your suggestions are for improvement to the game. And let's try to be constructive. It is easy to hate on the devs, to hate on, to hate on the game, and to say, oh, this is bad, that is bad, that is bad. Yes, it might be bad, but at least give some sort of suggestion on how to improve it. So, uh, formation system is bad, yes. Please allow me to deploy my ships before the battle in positions where I would like them. In a way like that, a comment suddenly becomes more constructive. All right, rant ended, rambling over. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm very much looking forward to seeing what you guys think in, uh, in the, uh, the comments down below. And if you thought this was interesting, please give it a like so that more people can join the discussion. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon for more videos.